Today on the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage. Ravel's 1969 Chevy Nova SS 2-in-1. But before getting into all of it, I'm Trevor and welcome to the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage. Picture this, you've just discovered a model car you know nothing about. You scour around YouTube looking for any information on these model kits. You find countless build videos, but nobody even wants to show you what's in the instruction sheet. But then, you found the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage YouTube channel. We feature classic plastic, new releases, domestic kits, imports, television and movie cars, and model kits made by companies lost to time. If that sounds like a channel that you totally dig, subscribe and hit the bell icon next to it to never miss a video. So now let's go down to the bench and see what's in the box. The special edition Ravel 1969 Chevrolet Nova SS 2-in-1 model kit is a skill level 5 kit for ages 13 and up, molded in 125th scale. On this side of the box, we can see all the really awesome features of this model kit, like the amazing decal stripe package here, the stock engine, the racing engine, the stock wheels, the racing wheels, and the racing side profile. On this side of the box, we have the information on the kit, like the length, number of parts, and the color it's molded in, as well as our paint chart, which coincides with the Ravel colors. Our easy to follow instructions are of the booklet style and we get a description in English, French, and Spanish. Our first step of the build is getting the engine together. We have a right and left hand side engine block with the transmission, oil filter, oil pan. Then down here we get our choice of either stock or racing. So with the stock we get the factory belts and pulleys, the alternator and the power steering pump the intake manifold, the coil to the distributor, and the carburetor. Over on the race side, we get our belts and pulleys here. We also get a dual carburetor intake manifold with our dual carburetors and our air cleaners. Then we get into more of the engine build. Here we get to drop on our intake assembly onto the block, as well as the water pump, our belts and pulleys, the fan belt, and the clutch for the fan all go together here. Then we have our cylinder heads, our valve covers, and that part of the engine is complete. Then we drop down again to our choice of either stock manifolds for the exhaust or the two-piece racing exhaust headers left and right. Panel two completes our engine build by attaching the starter and the fuel pump and then dropping the engine right into the chassis. Next, we have our choice of either building the stock or the race interior. So starting with the stock interior, we have these wonderful side door panels which drop into the chassis, as well as the rear bench seat, and then our center console with the shift lever. If racing is your scene, then add in the separate molded side door panels onto the chassis, as well as our three-piece roll bar into the back, and this really wicked shift lever. We continue our interior assembly in panel three with either the stock or racing dashboard. So here we have the dashboard and there is a decal you can put on the instrument panel as well as your steering column and your steering wheel. Next up, we build our two bucket seats by putting in the seat front onto the seat back. We complete our interior by adding in the bucket seats to the floor panels and then gluing in our completed dashboard into these two notches. On the firewall, we turn it around and add our pedals right into here and then we glue the firewall onto the interior. Then we use our brake booster right here, glue it on, and our master cylinder, glue that in place. We've got our battery and we've got our windshield washer bottle being all glued into the front. The next step is to turn our chassis upside down and build up our three-piece exhaust system with the mufflers and the exhaust pipes and glue that all into place, lining up the front ends with the headers on our engine. Once that is complete, we can add in our suspension by first gluing down this radius rod and then dropping in our lower A-arms. Step four shows the assembly of our rear axle. So first we're gonna build this stock by installing the long leaf springs onto the rear axle and then putting the differential cover up in the front. Once you have built this, you can either stop and continue to build stock or go into the race version by adding in these brackets here, as well as the little blocks for lifting up the front and rear ends of those leaf springs. Once you have the rear axle all together, drop it into the chassis, put in your differential and this anti-sway bar in the back, and then attach your shock absorbers. 
Our next step is to assemble our wheels, and here we have the choice of either stock or racing. So for the stock version, we have the rally wheels going into the small tires with the little metal axle pin and the wheel back. Then for racing, you want these small tires up front. So here's our racing wheel going into the small tire with the metal pin and the wheel back. And then in the rear, you want the large tire and the large mag wheel being put in there with a the metal axle and the backing plate for the wheel. Once you have your wheels figured out, you can attach them to the front and rear suspension. Panel 5 shows our radiator and radiator support all being glued together. So here we have the fan shroud, the radiator and the support. That drops into the front of the chassis and then you connect that to your engine with the upper radiator hose. Getting into the body assembly, it says, Note, paint window trim, door handles, emblems, and body trim silver. So here we have the body upside down, and we're adding in all our windows, as well as the dome light and our rear view mirror. Once that step is complete, we can then put our assembled interior up into the body, and then take the body and drop it onto our chassis. I made a little mistake in step 5. It was the lower radiator hose that glued on first. Here we have our upper radiator hose and there's actually two different hoses. Number 61 is for the stock version and number 123 is for the race version. And then after you install all that, drop in your air cleaner on top of your carburetors. Panel 6 shows the assembly steps for the front end of your Nova. First we start with the grill and we install that onto the front fenders. And we install our bumper into the little holes underneath the grill. Coming over here, we now add in all our glass components. So the headlights and the side marker lights, as well as the license plate being glued right in here. Here we finish off the back end of our Nova by installing the rear bumper onto the rear fenders. And then we put in our rear turn signals as well as our backup lights and the license plate decal. Down below we have our choice of either the stock or the racing hood. The racing hood has the bulge in toward the back. So what we do is we install our hood hinges here and here and the front trim onto the front of the hood. If you decide to use the stock hood, you want to add on the little hood vents right into there and there, as well as the windshield wipers being dropped into the cowl, and then you would add in your hood into the front of the car. The next step is to apply on our GM door handles and our two-piece mirror onto the body. Panel 8 shows our decal application for the stock version of the Nova, including our license plate, our SS emblems, and all the little side bits. Here's the decal application if you want to build the racing version. So we've got our long Chevy stripe here with the bow tie for the window. We also have the Supernova decal on the side and all the wheel decals and everything else to make this model look amazing. Next we get into our plastic components and check out how amazing this body looks. Here we have our front radiator brace with the top of the radiator right there. We have to remove these four little bullet things that are in here. That was something to help in the molding process. Then we have the accurate looking roof line. If we turn the body on the side, you can see the sunken in bits for the door handle. And we've got the nice little Nova fins on the front. We also have the signal lamps, the side marker lights, I should say. Turning it over, look at that roof. Again, nice and padded with the interior. We have to remove these little mold marks up front with that number 16 hobby blade. Overall, not too many mold marks up underneath. The back end it looks pretty accurate to the Nova, even has the Nova script in the back and the little key latch for our trunk. Again, very amazing work from Ravel. Here we have our interior floor panel and check out the back of the seat. Again, really nice. This is what it would look like in the real car, all opened up with the different sheet metal holes in there. We have a carpet down below and sunken in area for the seats. Look at those inner fender wells. Again, really nice looking work here. Up and underneath there are some mold marks which you can easily sand out. These may or may not interfere with the fit and finish of the chassis pan. But overall again, a really nice work. Here we have the chassis pan and you can see a lot of location holes and pins. Again, really excellent work. Let's turn this over and admire the detail under here. Again, looks like a real GM floor panel. 
There is a little uh, manufacturer's mark right in here, Revell Incorporated 2008, made in China. So this model has been around for this modern era of ours. But overall, again, it looks really cool and will be excellent when you turn the car over for future investigation. Inside the model kit, when I opened the box, it was all assembled. So here is the fit and finish of the interior if you can see through the windows, as well as the chassis up underneath. Now, the way the body side moldings all wrap in, it makes it very hard for this interior to shake loose as it is. So that is the testament to how amazing this model kit goes together. Our next part three contains our engine, and here we've got our standard transmission in the back, as well as the engine block molded all as one piece. There's our cylinder heads, and here we've got our exhaust manifolds, upper radiator hoses. We've got our alternator here with the bracket. We also have the front water pump and the stock intake manifold, the starter motor, the oil pan, and our stock belts and pulleys, as well as the fan. There's our oil filter and our distributor. For the racing version, we have our dual intake manifold, the upper radiator hose, made a mistake again with that lower radiator hose. Here we've got our fan belts and pulleys. We also have the two-piece exhaust headers. Here we have our suspension components as well as the rear axle and the front axle as well with the upper A arms and our tie rod right here. We also have our front radius and rear radius rods. Here are the big long leaf springs. There we've got our brake system with the brake booster and our brake booster and master cylinder. And then we've got our differential front cover as well as a windshield washer bottle. Bringing this up into the camera, take a look at the nice detailing on there. Again, very beautiful work by Ravel. An awesome model kit to add to your collection for sure. In the upper parts tree, we have our exhaust pipes which lead into the mufflers in the back. And here are the racing features for the rear suspension. We have these nice bars right here, as well as the lifter blocks and the rear drum brake backing plates. Here we have the secondary part of our exhaust system with the bottoms of the muffler, as well as the rear muffler in the back with our tailpipes coming out there and there. Here's our shock absorbers and our drive shaft. There we've got the fan shroud and the radiator, as well as the radiator mounting bracket here. And then we've got our firewall, our battery, and all our four wheel backs. Take a look at that radiator, a nice mesh in there, as well as the shroud. Again, really cool stuff. Off the back, mold marks, get rid of them. But overall, this will build up and look really nice. Here we have the side door panels and the rear panel all molded as one piece. We also have this amazing dashboard. Here's our front floor pedals. Here's our column for our steering as well as the steering wheel and the hood hinges. Again, looking at this in the camera, what an awesome amount of detail here. Just like the real thing, only smaller. Take a look at that dashboard with a nice glove box and the panel here for adding in our decal. Pedals look nice, everything looks great on this. Next up is our seating arrangement. So here is the rear bench, as well as our front buckets and the backs of our seats. So now I'm gonna bring this up into the camera really quickly, and you can see the nice upholstery pattern on those seats, very beautiful. As well as in the back seat, right here we have the little lever for lifting that, for folding the seat forward for getting the passengers into the back end. Our next parts tree includes the stock hood and the center console. So bringing this up to the camera and turning it over, you can see the nice ribbing in here as well as the trunk mat underneath. There are some mold marks that they'll have to clean up. And then our center console here again looks really nice, just like the real one in the Nova. If you want to go all out racing, here is the racing hood with the bulge right there. And we have our three piece roll bar. So bringing this up to the camera, flipping it over, you can see again another matting underneath, as well as a little perimeter framework. There are mold marks in the corners and right in the center of the hood bulge, but overall this is a pretty nice looking drag racing hood. Getting into our chrome, we have the wonderful Nova SS rear bumper, the front bumper, the grill with the headlights. We also have our license plate shrouds, carburetor, valve covers, air cleaner, alternator, rear view mirror, 
side mirror and mirror lens. We also have our windshield wipers and the door handles. Bringing this up to the camera, we can see the wonderful grill there, the SS emblem. Again, we have our air cleaner, looking like the real thing. Turning it over, you can see a couple of mold marks here and there. Need to be cleaned up with your number 11 hobby blade. But overall, the chrome looks very fantastic. On this part three, we have the SS wheels. We also have the little vents for the hood, the front of the hood, and our shift lever. Taking a look at these parts, you can really see the nice detailing in those wheels. Looks pretty perfect. They are drilled through or open in the back. So that's the uh, real authentic way of doing it. Again, look at the nice vents on there. Excellent, excellent work. Couple of mold marks up underneath. Maybe not such a big deal. Overall, nice pieces. And for the racing fans, we have the nice mag wheels, as well as our carburetors here, and the custom air cleaners, and the really funky looking gear shift lever. Let's take a look at those nice mags. Again, they are hollow in the back through those little holes. Really excellent stuff. Look at all the bolts on there. Nice, nice work. Carburetors look really well. So do the air cleaners. They have the little paper element around the outside, so you have to paint those with some flat white. Overall, really excellent stuff. Next up, we have the pieces that make up our glass. These, of course, are molded in clear plastic. We have the front windshield with sun visors, which you need to paint. The rear glass. We also have our side marker lights and our backup lights, as well as the headlights and the side glass. None of these parts are molded in transparent red, so you either have to paint them or use the kit supply decals. Next up, we have the tires, and before I actually open this, I want to point out that here are the metal axle pins in this bag, in this very tight little area. So I'm not going to cut that open and show you the pins, just in case I lose them. But I will cut this bag open and show you the tires right now. Here we have the stock tires, and unfortunately there are no raised letters on the side like Goodyear or Firestone or All Trade or any of those other kinds of ones. And we also have the drag slicks in the back, which again are smooth on both the sidewalls and the tread, as you can see here. It does sort of kick down a little bit right in here, and you can see a seam line up the middle, but you should be able to put this in your tire spinning tool and just hold this to sandpaper and let that tread all sand up nicely. Looking at this, the tires, they are on this spider here. They also have the little tab at the end, so you have to cut it off here and here. But it does come with a really nice tread, which should also clean up in your sanding tool, your wheel spinning tool for sure. Again, really nicely done, but I do wish these said like Goodyear or something. Here we have the decal sheet, the piece de resistance or the part of resistance. <laughs> anyway, what we have is our stripes here for the hood, the roof, and the trunk lid. We also have two sets of instrument panels, one being the stock version with the speedometer being all laid out in a line, and the second one being the race version with all the little VDO type gauges. We also have SS logos for the wheels, and the nice side stripe, GM Performance Parts, this is more modern. This is a little white thing, sort of the triangle, I guess, that gets stuck on the Hooser wheels. These are all wheel decals. Supernova side graphics. We also have what looks like a bit of dirt for the rear wheel arches. Then we have Illinois Mighty Mouse license plate. We have a Chevy Tough license plate. We have a California KTG 063. So this is probably more period correct for 1969. And we also have another Illinois plate, Illinois Nova 69. We've got the NHRA decal here, 383 Stoker, 12.5. This of course is one of the numbers for drag racing, go in the windshield for the class, I guess. We also have all the little emblems and under hood stickers, which would be in here, as well as the side marker light decals and the Chevy emblem. And then down here we've got sponsors like Moroso, we've got Auto here, <laughs> Mr. Gasket, Krager, Hooker Headers, Hurst, Valvoline, Fram, VP, and Champion. 
Again, a really nice decal sheet. It also comes with the blue backing here so you can see where you're cutting out and hopefully see some of that decal film as you're cutting so that you don't get any silvering around the edges. Again, really awesome decal sheet and will look great on your Chevy. Well, I really hope you enjoyed this unboxing of Ravel's 1969 Chevrolet Nova SS. And if you want to get some great models, check us out at www.monster-hobbies.ca. Sign up for that newsletter so that every week you get to see the latest that's coming out, as well as sales and some great discounts. And until next time, everybody, like, subscribe, and share, and we'll see you in the next unboxing.